Come, my time-travelling friends, and let's go on an adventure together. Welcome, my time-travelling friend, to this the sixth and final day in our virtual tour of Tudor London. Today, I will be your guide as we visit the jewel in Henry VIII's architectural crown, Hampton Court Palace. Shortly, we will walk together through the palace from the main western gatehouse to the inner sanctum of Henry VIII's apartments. Along the way, we will marvel at the splendour of this most magnificent of Tudor buildings. But before we begin our tour, I want to tell you a little about the history of Hampton Court for there has been a manor on this site for many centuries before King Henry VIII established the royal court here at the palace. Records for the earliest manor stretch back to 1086, with its first owners including Walter de St. Valerie, whose family owned the manor for around 150 years thereafter. Then, during the early 13th century, Hampton Court was passed to Henry de St. Alban, who in turn either lent or gave the land to the Knights Hospitallers of St. John of Jerusalem. And they had their English headquarters at the Priory of St. John in the city. During the early 14th century, wealthy local landowners bestowed further lands upon the manor, such that by the beginning of the 1400s, Hampton Court had augmented to an estate of considerable value. Now by the late 1400s, the manor was being leased to one of the most powerful men in the land at the time, Sir Giles Daubeny. He had risen to become Henry VII's Lord Chancellor having earned the friendship and trust of King Henry VII by standing alongside the late King on the battlefield at Bosworth. After Sir Giles died in 1508, it was not too long before the lease of the manor was taken up by another Tudor courtier who, like Sir Giles, had risen to the height of power as the King's Lord Chancellor. Of course, I'm talking about the late Cardinal of York, Thomas Wolsey. Wolsey secured the 99-year lease of the relatively small, single courtyard manor house from the Knights Hospitallers on Midsummer's Day, 1514. And by January 1515, he had set about converting it to a grand palace for entertaining royalty foreign ambassadors and dignitaries. A moat surrounded the original house, but Wolsey had this infilled and commenced an extensive campaign of building, including creating a second large courtyard, today known as Base Court, as well as new kitchens, courtyards, lodgings, galleries and gardens. And he also began work on the chapel. Of course, entertaining Wolsey's royal master was an expected part of the cardinal's role. And so Henry's first minister built luxurious accommodation for the king and his then wife, Catherine of Aragon. In your day, this range survives and forms the East Range of Clock Court, which in its time was simply known as Inner Court. Sadly, my friend, many of the interiors of the King's Chambers have been lost to later remodelling, but together we will draw back the veil of time and walk the ghostly halls, chambers and corridors once more. Of course, the Cardinal once described by his gentleman Usher as being one of the haughtiest men that ever lived, eventually fell from the king's good graces. 
1529, Thomas Wolsey was ordered to remove himself from the house for four days while the king entertained foreign dignitaries. And when Wolsey left Hampton Court on the 3rd of July of the same year, he would never set eyes on his Renaissance palace again. But not long after, Henry VIII took full possession of Hampton Court and embarked on an enormous building campaign of his own, remodelling parts of Wolsey's palace, including the Great Hall, the Great Gallery, whilst also building a whole new suite of rooms for his new queen, Anne Boleyn. Everywhere, stonemasons and carpenters set about carving the king's arms, heraldic beasts, devices and badges in stone and wood, while over the entrance to the west gate, directly in front of us, was affixed a large tablet of stone, carved with the king's arms and motto. Painters were instructed to gild and finish all of the ornamental carvings. Nowhere was more spectacularly finished in such a fashion as the ceiling of the Great Gallery, as you will see shortly. Now, enough history, my friend. Join me as I take you through the palace to show you some of the public and privy apartments of the King's Grace. <laughs> and in case you're wondering, the year is 1537. His Majesty has been in possession of Hampton Court for some eight years and during this time His Grace has commanded extensive building and refurbishment to enlarge the Cardinal of York's original palace. It is early October and there is great anticipation in the palace as the current Queen, Jane, is lying in her chamber heavily pregnant and waiting for the arrival of the king's hoped-for son and heir. While Queen Jane waits, secluded in Perda in the queen's chambers, the king passes the time hunting as it is a fine and bright day. So it is fitting, is it not, that while the king is away, we have chance to explore the palace state apartments. And do not be afeared, for no one will see us, but we may meet some familiar faces along the way. When you enter Hampton Court in your day, you will usually do so by its original main entrance. The gatehouse, commissioned by Wolsey, was initially five storeys high, rather than the three that you see in your day. Sadly, it was reduced in height in the 18th century when it was found to be unstable. The terracotta roundels sited on either side of the gatehouse depict the heads of Roman emperors Tiberius and Nero. These hint at the Italianate influences that shaped the building of Wolsey's original palace and was meant to reflect the fashionable Renaissance architecture of the Cardinal's contemporaries in Italy. As we cross the bridge together, which leads into Base Court, let's pause for a moment and appreciate the Tudor moat, which in your day is drained but know that the range of buildings that runs parallel to the bridge on your right as you face the palace is called the House of Easement and in my day contains the public garderobes. <laughs> you might know them as toilets. Of course, this is not where the most aristocratic members of the court go to the toilet. No, indeed, they have their own private garderobes or closed stools away from the hoi polloi of the court. Stepping into base court is as it was when Wolsey built it, as a place to house his guests and his large household. There are single and double lodgings. Each of the 30 double guest lodgings has an outer and an inner room with a garderobe and a fireplace. A visiting French dignitary who came to Hampton Court in 1527 remembers his visit thus. 
We returned to Hampton Court, and every one of us was conveyed to his chamber severally, having in them great fires and wine ready to refresh us. Every room had a basin and a ewer of silver, some gilt and some parcel gilt, and some two great pots of silver in like manner, and one pot at the least with wine and beer, a bowl or goblet, and a silver pot to drink beer in, a silver candlestick or two, with both white lights and yellow lights of three sized of wax, and a staff torch, a fine manchet, and a loaf of bread. Thus was every chamber furnished throughout the house. Fine apartments, indeed, I'm sure you'll agree. But let us walk together across this great courtyard as we admire the inner gatehouse which stands directly before us. It is the entry to the King's State Apartments via this, the Great Stair. In your day, you might know this gateway as Anne Boleyn's gateway. In fact, during her ascendancy at court, Mistress Boleyn occupied a suite of rooms directly above the arched entrance and across from the King's chambers. As we walk under the gatehouse, look up. In your day, you will see the carved initials H.A., although you should remember, my time-travelling friend, that these are Victorian replicas. Oh, wait. Listen. That bell is one of the oldest objects in the palace. It was even here before Cardinal Wolsey leased the manor house from the Knights Hospitallers. Just think, it has been regularly chiming for hundreds of years, marking out the rhythm of court life here at Hampton Court. Now let us mount the stone steps which lead up into Hampton Court's Great Hall. Mm -hmm. 